Yo, what is up, guys? <laughs> Damn, God, sick today. But what is up, guys? We're back with well, what you know the new series, and this series is what if the Arto was Shinji Haraku's reincarnation. And without further ado, let's get straight into the what if. Now we basically start this what if when a new like a newborn was born, a baby was born out of Kushina Uzumaki, and. Uh, Minato and Amikaze. Now this baby born would have blonde hair, blonde hair, and brown eyes. Now this boy would be named none other than Naruto Uzumaki, or this boy would be Naruto Uzumaki. And basically, this boy would none other, you know, would be like I said, the um, son of Kushina Uzumaki and Minato and Amikaze. Now, basically, the third Hokage's wife would wrap Naruto up into those weird, you know, the weird blankets that they put on newborns and basically clean them up. Since, number one, there's just a lot of process when it comes to just being born, I guess. So, I don't really want to go into details. I might get, like, age-restricted. So, uh, for, you know, saying that. But, basically, Naruto would get wrapped up and cleaned up like any baby born, you know, would get cleaned up as since just because they're in adult times doesn't change the fact of how you know he's born now um uh when minato would try to hold naruto third okage's wife would say that the mother always hurts holds the child first now kushina would hold the baby and minato would get ready you know to receive the kubi now Hyuzin's wife would just be you know outside and she would pretty much get murked murdered murked if you don't know what that means it just means killed then uh madara would attack now Mado would say, you know, hand you know, hand over the the Night Tales and Shuriki or I'm gonna kill Naruto. Now I know I just summoned like I said Kishino was holding Naruto, but let's just say the wife was holding Naruto because she supposed to say had to do some test and stuff like that. Like any newborn baby would get. Now Minato would tell Madara, you know, let's just calm down. But um Madara would say that he's perfectly calm. Now, out of nowhere, Madara would start to feel this, uh, like, bloodlust from Naruto. Now, this would actually be like Naruto's Zanpakuto, or Hiroku's Zanpakuto. Now, if you don't know what Zanpakuto, it's literally the power to, like, like, Shika is the power to send you to an inverted world if you smell his scent, or the scent from his sword. Now, let's just say there was a minor version of this, since he doesn't actually have the Zanpakuto, or Shika. It would make it look like, you know, like Obito or Madara would start to hallucinate. So, oh, Minato would use this as a chance to basically escape with Naruto, and Obito would take Kushina to the shrine where he would rip out the Nine Tails and force it into a summoning pact. After this, he would summon the Nine Tails and put it under a Genjutsu with Madara's eyes because Obito does, didn't have a left eye, only because, you know, Madara gave him, it, gave him an eye. So, I think Obito used his own eye, or he might have used Madara's eye. I'm actually confused, but... I don't, it just, he just still put out their Genjutsu pretty much. Uh, I just kind of went off there on a tangent, but my bad on that. Uh, Naruto would then, you know, be resting at Minato's, the Namikaze compound after Minato put him there. And he would, you know, flash, or not flash up. They were flying, use, use the flying Raijin to go towards Kushina. He would then pick up Kushina and take you know, take her towards the Namikaze compound and, you know, put her down. And then he would put on the Hokage's cloak for saying, I'll be right back. Uh, and he would use the flying Raijin to go to the mountain. This is where he'll see none other than Obito, like, from, you know, come out from a portal. And they would start their fight. Uh, Madara, through the whole fight, would try to, like, um, chain up uh, Minato with his, you know, his chains. But this wouldn't work because Minato would slam a Rasengan into his back, taking advantage or realizing uh, Obito's like space time ninjutsu, being able to only uh, phase through one part of the body, and you can't do all of, all of his body at once. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> having a fucking cough of it. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, damn, I've been sick recently, so I'm just, I tried to record this, but basically, Ma Madara would get hit with the Rasengan, or Obito would get hit by it, and Obito would retreat after, you know, getting severely injured, and he would have to release, on the, he would have to release the Genjutsu on, 
uh, Kurama. Now Minato would pretty much head to the Okage's tower, and his presence would so was pretty much Kage level since he was the Kage, and Kurama would sense him after wreaking havoc on the village. So, um, you know, Kurama would see him and get pretty mad. He would then charge up a Bijotama and send it towards Minato. Now Minato would grab the Bijotama and flying Raishin it away to outside the village or, you know, just outside the village. So none of the village could actually you know, feel the impact of that. Now, basically, um, after this, uh, Minato and Kurama would be, you know, uh, would be fighting outside the village after he was in and Minato and other people would help push the Kurama or push the Nine Tails out of the village. Now, uh, Minato would be fighting him and Kushina would wrap him, wrap like Kurama in the chakra change before um, Minato would go to seal the Nine Tails using like he would use the Reaper Death Seal. After Kushina would say, you know, you're gonna die if you use that, or you know, just all the dialogue that would happen. Now Minato would activate the uh, the Reaper Death Seal and pretty much uh, like grab uh, Kurama. But Kurama with his last chance would pretty much go to stab Naruto, but Minato and Kushina would pretty much block it with themselves, like with their own bodies. Now, after this, uh, Minato and Kushina would pretty, or not Minato, but like, Mina, like Minato would seal the rest of the Nine Tails, while uh, Kushina would try to hold Kurama with her chakra chains. Now, after this, uh, pretty much Minato would die, and he was going to come basically asking Kushina when, you know, she's about to die since Uzumaki blood is pretty, like, OP. So, Kushina, on early, you know, about to die, or was about to die, would tell he was in that uh, this baby or their son is named Naruto. Now, pretty much, uh, you know, now he was in with uh, Naruto's name, and not, you know, and the sword would pretty much like appear, just like from Ryatsu. It wouldn't just fall from the sky or something. It would just appear right next to Naruto. Now he was gonna be pretty confused at this, but he would just pick up the sword and Naruto and take it back to his house or his home estate. Now, after a few days, there'd be a debate in the village whether the Uchiha were behind the massacre. Not the massacre, uh, the Nine Tails attack. But unfortunately, the Uchiha clan would be exiled to like the edges of the village and naruto would this time actually be adopted by hiruzen instead of actually you know living by himself since hiruzen could actually sense the intense spiritual pressure from naruto and realize that he should you know you know he could be a good asset to the village not he not that he only thinks naruto is a weapon but it's like two good things at once naruto is minato san he has to keep his promise and he's gonna be a strong ninja so when naruto's growing up Everyone, like, people would come from all over the ninja nations and try to open the sword to keep it from themselves. But they wouldn't be able to open it. So, one day, Naruto was just walking around, around four years old, and he would just walk to the sword and easily unsheathe it. Now, it looked like he was going to stab himself, but for some reason, the sword wouldn't, you know, hurt himself. Since, number one, the sword is your soul, you can't hurt yourself. Now, like, you know, since he's a baby, you know, you can't actually, you know, it's kind of dangerous to have a sword normally, but like I said, you can't get hurt by your own soul. So after this, Hiruzen would think that this sword was specifically made for Naruto, and that Naruto really was the child of prophecy, like um, Jiraiya and Minato predicted. Now, pretty much, uh, Hiruzen would train Naruto in the way of the swordsmanship, basically getting people like, uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, the purple hair Ambu, and I don't actually, I think that's her name, Yu-Gi-Oh, or yu gi -Oh, I can't pronounce her name, but it's like Y-U-G-A-O, and basically the other uh, Ambu, like other Ambu who have trained in swordsmanship, and they would train Naruto for the next maybe four years, and after this long, intense training, Naruto would be pretty uh, efficient at swordsmanship, and he'd pretty much go to the academy, signing himself as like a sword user. He wouldn't, you know, since he can't use chakra. Now Naruto uh, would walk in on the first day of the Chinen exams, and he would wave towards the Uchiha family, since the Uchiha massacre didn't happen, and Mikoto was friends with Kushina, so you know they would definitely be friendly with Naruto. And Itachi didn't have a problem with it, nor did Fugaku. Even though Fugaku was going to kidnap Naruto and use his Mangeko on him to release the Nine Tails for the coup d'etat, but we're not going to talk about that. 
the artist Naruto would walk in the class and basically they would start the orientation with Mizuki Sensei and Iruka Sensei introducing the students to their first few, you know, for the next few years, you know, getting ready for the next four years of the academy. Now they'd start doing obstacle courses and other stuff like this, which Naruto would excel in since, you know, he had learned a teleportation technique, which he thought was a body flicker, but this would be the flash step. Now, he wouldn't have, like, a perfect flash step like Yorichi or Byakuya, but he'd have, like, an efficient flash step. Like, you know, he could make after images, like, one or two after images. But, you know, he's not too good at it. You know, he's only eight years old. And he was pretty good at swordsmanship. Now, everyone would pretty much uh, treat him like uh, Lee, since he's not good at ninjutsu, genjutsu, or taijutsu. They wouldn't really, you know, respect him as much. But that won't be for long. This is only the first few days. So the next few days, they will have like a, a sparring match. And of course, it's Sasuke versus Naruto, just like in Kaden. Now in this timeline, or the fight would go different in this timeline. Now when Yuriko would say, you know, 3, 2, 1, and do Hajime, uh, Naruto, or Sasuke would run towards uh, Naruto, basically pull out a kunai, and Naruto would pull out a sword, or his sword. Now he would unsheath. Uh, Sakanade, or that's the name of his sword, but he wouldn't go Shika or anything, he would just use the sealed state, since he didn't really learn Shika yet. Now, he would pretty much start clashing with uh, Sasuke, and Iruka would be sweating, since he realized, you know, they're using weapons, but he'd realize Sasuke's from the Uchiha clan, he can definitely keep, you know, keep up with this, and he knows Naruto was trained by, in the Kenjutsu, in the way of the Kendo, uh, so he'd keep the fight going. Now Mizuki was sitting there in the back room basically wishing that Naruto would lose because he had grown a deep hatred for Naruto over the few years since Naruto is, you know, has the Nine Tails and everyone thinks that Naruto is the Nine Tails. Now this would pretty much prove their point when he can't use chakra, so they would use this as a point to say that he is the Nine Tails. But, you know, who is in, and you know the Shinobi uh elders would shut this down. And Pretty much, let's resume the fight. Now, Sasuke and Naruto would be clashing sword to kunai, and Naruto was shown to basically be dominant in this side. Now, Naruto would pretty much, um, uh, you know, use a flash step to appear behind Sasuke, and he put the sword to his neck. Now, um, after this, Sasuke would, you know, uh, have to forfeit, since number one, he doesn't have as much pride as he usually does, since the Uchiha clan is only happening later that day. And, you know, it didn't happen yet, so, and he doesn't really have that developed pride yet. So, he would then forfeit, and basically, you know, say, you know, GG, or, like, good game, to Naruto. And Naruto would respond the same way, realizing, realizing that Sasuke wasn't the same as the other, you know, uh, you know, kids there. Other than Shikamaru and Choji, since those are the OGs that, you know, they didn't care what was sealed in Naruto, they would still be friends with him. Now, we'll do a time skip to around four years. Now, after the uh, you know, Uchiha massacre, Naruto would try to be friends with Sasuke, but Sasuke would keep giving him the cold shoulder. So, after like two years, he would then give up, and Naruto would start focusing on training with his sword, since he realized he actually feels a presence in his sword. Now, he would pretty much try to train his best, you know, he's getting closer and closer to getting Shikai, but he's just not there yet. Now, after this, Naruto, in this time, we went learn a few Kido, like... Uh, Hado number 33, so-called sweet, and other low-level Kidos, since, like I said, he's only, you know, 10 to 12 years old, so, you know, he wouldn't learn advanced Kido yet. Now, in this timeline, I'm basically making it where everyone is 16 years old, so the academy would not be 4 years, it'd be 8 years, since I think that's an appropriate time. You wouldn't want 12-year-old kids running around doing missions, it's better for them to be 16. Uh, so, you know, just like how the I don't know, never mind, it's wrong, that's not how the military was, but basically 16 is better than 12, so basically they spend the next 8 years just training and training, and Naruto would be so close to Shikai, but he just, he just needed that one push to get him there. Now Naruto one day would basically take the ninja test, or everyone would take the uh, test to basically become a ninja, and Naruto unfortunately would still fail because Mizuki would basically try to fail him, and it would work. So, after school, Mizuki, basically, Naruto not knowing that Mizuki actually tried to make him fail, Mizuki would pretty much tell Naruto that in order to pass, he would have to steal the scroll of ceiling. Now, Naruto would actually believe this, since he realized Hyuzin was training him all his life, and maybe this was a test for Hyuzin, so he could, you know, just grow as a ninja, since, you know, in his swordsmanship as well, to grow in general. 
So he would then accept that mission, and basically Mizuki would tell him to meet him in the forest after, you know, after, uh, after he still the scroll of sin tonight. Now, Naruto would walk away, and Naruto would know that Mizuki was capping, and everything I just said was a lie. But he still wants to steal the scroll of ceiling because he's Shinji Haraku's reincarnation, and Shinji is kind of kind of funny and playful at the same time, but gets serious when he needs to get serious. Basically, like every MC that cracks jokes and is OP. Now, basically, Naruto later that night would pretty much uh flash step outside, like on the roof of the Okage's mansion, and he'd quickly run in, basically uh stealthily or whatever the verb is for being stealthy i guess yeah that's the word and he'd run in with a you know extreme level of stealth that would put a uh, soy to shame and he'd pretty much take the scroll of ceiling and he would flash step out of there now basically maruto would be in the forest and he'd be running through the scroll of ceiling because he was curious now he would see these secrets now, like some secrets, he would see some notes from the third Okage, which he wrote about his sword, and he was just guessing about his abilities. Now, he see from the third Okage's notes that this sword's abilities was to make somebody hallucinate, like, an inverted world. And he also has other magical abilities, which he would write down, just as a hypothesis, so he can just gauge Naruto's abilities. And he'd realize Naruto, if he trained all these abilities, would be at least Joni level. Naruto would be shocked at this thing, you know, you know, most of the academy, he only was just better than Sasuke, you know, he wasn't better than people like Lee or Neji, or that's what he thought at least, but Naruto would like copy down these techniques and try to represent them from his solo into his sword, now he pretty much just awakened Shikai, but he wouldn't use it right there, right, right then and there, kind of how Ichigo didn't get Shikai right after he basically, uh, you know, went through the test that Kisuke gave him. He got Shikai after he admitted that he was weak against Kisuke. So after this, uh, Mizuki would come down, basically tell Naruto to throw the scroll towards him. Now Naruto would say, "I don't think so." He would then keep the scroll to his back and basically say, "Uh, you know, you know, I know what you're really, you know, I know what you really are, Mizuki, or what your plans are to give the scroll, you know, to steal the scroll of ceiling." And this wasn't any test. Now, after this, Mizuki would throw, you know, get the big shuriken off his back and throw it towards Naruto. Naruto would easily slice the shuriken in half, and Naruto and Mizuki would get into a battle. Now, after they would get into a battle, Naruto would be like, I'm gonna end you right here. He would then uh, just instinctively raise his sword up and kind of do it horizontally, facing the, the, the blade would be facing downwards kind of like how uh aizen's gonna do shatter kyoko Sugatsu, but this is shinji's incantation who then used collapse sakanade and a ring would form out of uh naruto's handle like extending from his handle and he'd spin the sword basically releasing a a, a mist or like a smell like a, a scent now um naruto would be like hmm you smell that after his music you would take a deep breath in and he'd be trapped into it he would then be sent to the inverted world where naruto would be like you're trapped in my inverted world no naruto won't be like shinji where he literally tells his ability his tell tells his enemies all his abilities and weaknesses his strengths and weaknesses of his abilities just so we can get folded naruto won't be telling anyone his weaknesses uh naruto would pretty much uh, you know uh run towards Mizuki, or that's what Mizuki would see, but he would pretty much get his head chopped off from behind, because, like I said, he's in the inverted world, so everything is inverted, so when Naruto is running towards him, he would be, Naruto would actually be behind him, now Mizuki, right before he died, like, let's see, he didn't get all of his head, he would just got, like, the neck, so he'd pretty much slit his neck, and Mizuki would be like, how, well, you know, like, in a dead, like, in a dead type voice, he'd say, like, how, how, you know, how did you beat me? After this, Naruto would say, the difference in our power is, like, infinite. Like, the difference in our power is infinite, and you'll never reach me. It's just like the the baboon who stares at the moon's reflection on the water. No matter how far you try to reach into the water reflection, the water's reflection, you'll never reach me. Now, if you don't know what that analogy I just used, it's the analogy that Byakuya used when he, like, was in the Renji versus Byakuya fight. So, I just basically used that analogy from Leech. 
now basically this would mark the end of the uh, you know, this journey, like, the him sailing, the scroll of sailing, and, late, like, around five minutes later, Uruka would come in with the rest of the Anbu, and basically, Uruka would give him his, uh, headband. Now, Naruto would thank him, and basically, uh, Naruto would be invited by Uruka to go get some ramen. Now, basically, um, this, like, um, basically, after Naruto got some Robin with Ruka, uh, that would be the end of the day and the end of this episode. Basically, for you guys that skipped until the end, we basically got to all of Naruto's childhood and the end of the academy where he is 16 years old and he just finished eating ramen with Ruka after becoming ninja, after stealing the scroll of sailing, and killing Mizuki and awakening Kashika. I know that's a lot of events in a 20 minute episode, but without further ado, guys. Uh, peace out.